Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Children's Online Sunday School. Happy Easter. Today we celebrate. We celebrate a risen Savior. We're going to celebrate here on our campus, but if you're not going to be able to join us, I'm glad that you decided to pop on to YouTube and to hear a story because of all the stories that I have ever told you. This one today is the most important one. Now, we know that the stories that Miss Chris tells you usually come from the Bible. I love to read to you guys straight from the Bible, but today I want to read from this book that someone gifted me. It is Beautiful Bible Stories. Now, we know that this story is true, and we know that we can look in our Bible in the Gospels and read it directly from the Bible, but I think the way this story is told is, is beautiful, and I think that it will help us to use our imaginations while I read the words on the page, I want you to put your thinking cap on and I want you to really try to envision in your mind what it might have looked like. Think about what the people that were there may have felt, what they would have seen, what they would have smelled. Use your senses and your imagination and just really put yourself into this story. Now, we know that today we celebrate a risen Savior, but we know that that story had been going on for a while before Jesus's, before he rose. On the same afternoon that Jesus died, one of the Jewish rulers who had believed on him went to Pilate and asked for Jesus's body so that he might bury it. Pilate checked with the captain in charge of the crucifixion, and when he found that Jesus was already dead, he gave this man, whose name was Joseph, permission to take the body away. Joseph wrapped the body with fine linens, and with it laid the spices another disciple had given. Then he and a few faithful followers who had stayed at the cross took the body to a tomb that Joseph had bought for himself. It was a tomb common in those days, one carved like a cave out of a ledge of a rock. Here they gently laid Jesus to rest and then rolled a stone over the opening of the grave. The next day was Saturday, the Jewish Sabbath. The Jewish priests and the Pharisees met to celebrate the death of Jesus. One of them said, I remember Jesus is saying something about rising from the dead in three days. Perhaps we had better seal his tomb carefully, or one of his disciples will come and steal the body and say that he has risen. So they went to Pilate, who gave them permission to seal the tomb and also to keep soldiers there on constant guard. The apostles and the women who followed Jesus returned to the upper room where Jesus had eaten the Passover and spent a very sad day. For three years, they had given their lives to a man whom they loved above everything else. Now there was nothing left except a body in Joseph's tomb. Gone was their future king before he had ever gotten to reign. Gone was his glorious kingdom, which they were to be members. Jesus was dead. Early the next morning, Mary Magdalene, a woman who Jesus had healed, and some other women went to the tomb to take more spices to lay with Jesus' body. On the way, they wondered how they would move the stone that covered the entrance to the grave. But that when they came within sight of the tomb, they saw that the stone was already rolled away. You see, earlier that morning, the Lord had sent an earthquake and an angel had come down from heaven and rolled away the stone. When the soldiers on guard saw the dazzling angel, they fell to the ground as if they were dead. Later, when they got up, they ran into the city and told the priest what they had seen. The priests were worried when they heard of it, not because they thought they had done wrong in killing Jesus, but because they did not want the people to know of it. They paid the soldiers to spread the story that the apostles had stolen the body while they were asleep. When the woman reached the tomb, they looked inside. In the place where Jesus' body had lain, two angels in shining white clothes stood. Do not be afraid, said the angels. 
You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified, but he is no longer here. He has risen. Go and tell this to the disciples. Tell them that Jesus has gone to Galilee and he will meet them there. The women ran quickly to tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. When Peter and John heard it, they set out running for the tomb. John was younger and could run faster, so he reached it first. He went into the tomb itself and found only the linen cloth in which Jesus' body had been wrapped. When Peter arrived, he went inside even further and found the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' face. They left, believing that the women had told them the truth. By this time, Mary Magdalene had returned to the garden alone, this time to look once again for a body that might have been stolen or hidden. She stood by the empty tomb crying when Jesus himself stood suddenly beside her. Mary, he said softly, when she looked and saw that it was he, she could hardly believe it was true. Master, she said, and her tears turned into ones of joy rather than sadness. As she ran into the city to tell the disciples that she had seen their Lord alive. Boys and girls, today we celebrate that risen Savior. We celebrate that Jesus is alive. We know that he was killed. He was crucified on a cross to save us from our sins. And when we accept that gift of salvation from Jesus, he will be our forever friend, forever and ever and ever. We know that everything that we've read in this story today is true because we've read about it in the Gospels, in God's very word. Boys and girls, I hope that you trust Jesus as your Savior, and I hope that today you are celebrating him as your risen Savior. Let's pray. Father God, we love you, and we know that you love us so much more than we can even imagine. And Lord, I just thank you for Easter and what we celebrate today. Amen.